This episode is brought to you by Amazon Prime. There's nothing sweeter than baking cookies during the holidays. With Prime, I get all my ingredients delivered right to my door, fast and free. No last minute store trips needed. And of course, I blast my favorite holiday playlist on Amazon Music. It's the ultimate soundtrack for creating unforgettable memories. From streaming to shopping, it's on Prime. Visit Amazon.com slash Prime to get more out of whatever you're into. What's up, YouTube? Welcome to the Supreme Resort. I'm Chaz Cool Guy, and this is Land V World, a podcast about Disneyland and Walt Disney World. And I already screwed up the introduction, which is the Supreme Resort. Uh, yes. Hi, welcome. It's a, it's one of these shows. This is the Supreme Resort, Land V World, a podcast about Disneyland and Walt Disney World, and which is the Supreme Resort. Each episode, we will discuss and explore each resort's ride by ride, land by land, park by park, heart stopping deal by the heart stopping deal. Uh, that's bad copy uh, to determine which is better, Disneyland or Walt Disney World. I'm Dan, and thank you for joining me on this quest to help the greater good of humanity answer. That very long, elusive question, which one is better? Uh, joining me, as always, from Scraping the Vault, Jimmy. Hi, thanks for having me. And mm -hmm. uh, Dan, you might say <laughs> that these heart-stopping deals mixed with the artisanal uh, imagineering, you might mm -hmm. want to call it the art of the deal. <gasps> Ooh. <laughs> you know, that's a, my favorite book, oddly enough. Uh <laughs> And also from the uh, smashing hit podcast, Bowie's Planning, as well as uh, like 15 other podcasts, it's Eric. Hello, uh, <laughs> I'm doing this as a favor to uh, <laughs> my fourth mistress. Uh, hey, uh, how you doing, everybody? <laughs> uh, hopefully you listen to this. Um, I need the money for alimony. Alimony Tony. <laughs> no, my name is Eric. Oh, listen to Comedy Bang Bang. That's true. Uh, it's one of our other podcasts where we all play different people. Um, hey, did you know that the Christmas season is upon us? That's right. It's, oh wow! <laughs> and what better what better uh, episode that can we possibly do than talking about shopping? Because that's oh. what I love to do more than anything. And uh, it's what people will be doing for, this. as you know, it's August, the beginning of August, which mm -hmm. means in the, in the parks, it's Christmas. Merry Christmas, <laughs> so everybody. Merry Christmas, everybody. If we're allowed to say that still. <laughs> oh, <well. laughs> oh, man. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, what I'm referring to is the reopening of the Haunted Mansion at Disneyland. But it's not really the Haunted Mansion. It's a little, it's a little Halloween costume called Haunted Mansion Holiday, because we all love the dark and twisted imagination of Tim Burton so very much. <laughs> My fave. As we all know, it's Haunted Mansion Holiday still, because when they closed the ride for refurbishment, it was Haunted Mansion Holiday. Why shut it down, redo, to shut it down and redo? Why bother? Why bother? Right. Just burn it down and build a Starbucks themed after Tim Burton. Um, From the twisted mind of Tim Burton. <laughs> Starbucks. He's a Starbucks. He's going to bleed <laughs> into your cup. Here's a, here's a macchiato that's inspired by German expressionism. Um, yeah. So I, I'm not sure you have both heard the rumors slash panic, whatever, that they might be removing the hanging guy. Which may or may not be the ghost host in no, the No, that's the mansion. best part. It's a dude who hanged. Whoa. I my real my main take on this is I don't know how you can possibly have a haunted building and ghosts if you don't have explicit <laughs> suicide? gruesome suicide. Dead people. <laughs> okay. Can't be haunted if somebody didn't commit suicide. Right. As we all know, these these two are synonymous. It's <laughs> I died by natural causes. <laughs> Boo. <laughs> Cancer. <laughs> no, but what do you choose? Choked think? on a ham. <laughs> <laughs> Mama Cass. <laughs> too soon, too soon. Sorry. Uh, oh, sorry. 
what, what do you two think? What, first, what do you think is going to happen? And do you think it, people should care? <laughs> or at what, to what extent do you think people should care? Um, I don't think it adds to the story. I think it's unnecessary. If anything, it's confusing because to your point, who is that? Right. Is it somebody that was hung by the ghost host? Is it the ghost host? Is it, um, not, what's his name? The Gracie? Who Who is it? Why is it? Personally, Dan, <clears throat> I don't see well. Mm. And in my hundreds and hundreds of times on this ride, I have never seen. Are you serious? Person. I've never seen it. <laughs> wow. You've never yeah. looked up. I look up all the time. I just don't see well enough to see it. But you've oh. like seen a picture, you know what oh, it is. Of course, right? yeah, okay. I know what it is. And okay. I, I've seen I've seen a vague outline. But um, so my take is it's unnecessary. I think that I don't, you know, do we need to be culturally sensitive and not quote unquote glorify suicide? Right. Sure. I don't think it matters either way. I don't think it's gonna have a positive or negative impact on the everyday goer. Now, most of Disneylanders are not every or, you know, they're not. They, you know, they go all the time, right? So they they care more than most. Um, but I think the rumor I heard is there's going to be a little bit more projection mapping, a little bit more animation in there that'll be creepy, but it won't include suicide. So you're saying that the next step isn't, there's always my way. And then he slits his throat and there's like <laughs> hot blood that pours on Ooh, everybody right. in the room. See, now that, that would be better. That's true. It, it was it was too vague, and it was, it was too implied clear. before. I want explicit. It should, right. it right. should be right. very clear. We should see a whole thing where he writes a note, and he like cries a little bit, and he like looks at himself in the mirror, and he puts the shotgun <laughs> in his mouth. Yeah, and, and then he's like, "Well, no." And in fact, it could be like a whole like Warner Brothers cartoon like segment of him like going for, like he has he has different options lined up, and then he finally you know figures. Hanging. So Elmer Fudd walks up and goes, I'm Webby if you are. <laughs> that would be great though, Dan. If like at the end of that, then it's like the the that's all folks. Porky pig, bitty 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 bitty. And then <laughs> And that's basically um, what the Jack Skellington animation is yes, currently. <laughs> I was about to say. It is very bad CG. Now, Dan, the the if I'm remembering correctly, let me go back to my aforementioned poor vision. Mm-hmm. In the Phantom Manor at Disneyland Paris. I do believe the phantom is holding the rope. Yes. So oh. that, that I could get behind, you know, suicide, let's not glorify, but murder, bring it on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, we can all identify with murder. I, don't, I, I feel like it's, it, to me, it's sort of like the, I keep using this example, the uh, native American wooden guy on main street. It's like, yeah. If I were to go, if I were to ride the Haunted Mansion for the very first time and it didn't have that and it had some other effect that was done well, mm-hmm. I wouldn't be like, hey, where's the guy hanging himself? Right. <laughs> this is not, this, this isn't haunted. Oh my God. <laughs> and the cigar just, store guy just walks up and goes, bang. <laughs> <laughs> we just talked about murder. Mm. Deadpool is now a hot property. I mm. say Deadpool shoots the guy <laughs> in the ride. <laughs> Perfect product placement, IP, murder. You just introduced something in my imagination about how, what if instead of doing the stupid, I mean, very well done. Not another what if show. Very. Oh my goodness. (laughs) uh, What if Haunted Mansion would had a different overlay every year and you could have Deadpool? (laughs) Ooh, I like that. What are some other overlays? Deadpool? Uh, Hellraiser. (laughs) <laughs> Hellraiser? Do they own that now? No, but I mean, wait, they might. They might. They probably do through like Dimension Films or something. Yeah, you could do X Men, obviously. Um, what else is scary? X-Men. Oh yeah, turn it into. Uh, uh, I mean, Xavier's Mansion. Yeah, I mean, these aren't these aren't. I'm not saying please let's do this. I'm mainly saying for the love of God, let's stop with the Haunted Mansion. <laughs> What else I'll is take, scary? I'll the take literally dog? anything else. Oh, the, sh- the haunted shaggy dog. Oh, Ooh, old Yeller. <laughs> old Yeller. <laughs> it's just In the elevator. The dad shoots the dog at the beginning. It's the dog who dies. <laughs> There's always my way. Bang. <laughs> 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 anyway, uh, Dan, that's my take on it. Um, 
I, th- I believe they probably will get rid of it. Some cool, creepy effect would be uh, desired. Yeah. And I mean, I as long as it's well done, I'm happy. I Will I miss it just because of like I'm used to it? Yeah, probably. But like, I get it. Like, I mean, I don't necessarily think that we need to be overly super hypersensitive about every little thing. But this is one that we could be a little, you know, <laughs> it doesn't need it. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's not okay. suicide okay. mansion. <laughs> yeah, it's not it's not necessary either way. Is it necessary to be there? No. Is it necessary to take it? No. I just don't know if it matters. Right. Um, by the way, um, I'm sorry. I I, I was going to change the subject, but I I will not until we're all done with this. You may Hooray. change the subject now. Thank you. Deadpool <laughs> is a rated R film. Great great movie. Fun fun. That's why I haven't uh, seen it. Um, because Gems it's rated like R. Fun mm-hmm. or movies. <laughs> um. So, you know, I so Chris Provost, Provost Park Pass, ladies and gentlemen, YouTube channel, Provost Park Pass, friend of the um, show. We're we're dating again. Oh, you're bit. you're on again. Good. We're on again a little bit. We're just oh. we're we're trying it out. See how it goes. I I have something to add to that after you, you're done saying what you're about to say. Who's just holding see. hands with him? Um, uh, his daughter. <laughs> Anyway, so the, the, he brought something up that I thought about when I, I finished watching Deadpool and Wolverine, uh, the third part of the trilogy. <laughs> and at the end of the credits, there's an end credit scene, no spoilers. And it says the very last title thing is a Walt Disney Studios production. Yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> Walt Disney would be spinning in his grave. <laughs> it's just like how he would, would never. Would he though? <laughs> He would okay, never put. Yeah, okay. I mean, would he, he? he's on tape. Uh, there's there's countless audio of him. T- that's just this is not Disney. Um, I don't care. I mean, yeah, everybody knows it's Disney, but just the fact that it says Walt Disney Studios, there's just something about it doesn't feel right from a Walt Disney perspective. That being said, having Deadpool then in the parks, yeah, <laughs> oh yeah, is I got to say, I was like, there's just how how do they do that? And they did it. And they did a phenomenal job with it. Right. There's double entendre, mm-hmm. there's innuendo, but it's just enough that is fun for the adults without really impacting kids probably don't get it. There's a going down joke. There's all kinds of different things that it, it's just, it's innocuous enough, but on brand Deadpool enough that I'm really impressed at how quickly they did it and how well they did it. Anyway, thoughts, Dan? I really like what they've done there. I think maybe the the key to unlocking the potential was for them to address for them to have Deadpool address like yeah I can't say the things that I want to say <laughs> which is perfect it's like oh yeah I'll get in trouble like he's it's almost as though like the the actor playing Deadpool is acknowledging that he is an actor playing Deadpool which is the way to go really I think what would be even more interesting and more fun is if they had that character not confined to Avengers campus and just like going around, like riding rides, just like, cause that's what would happen. <laughs> Storybook <laughs> on brand. Hey, it's Deadpool. <laughs> it would be on character brand and at Disneyland too. Right. <laughs> it's just, how is it different from rocket raccoon saying, when do we get to Disneyland? Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that it, it just embrace the meta-ness of it. May, maybe yeah. don't have him in Disneyland park, maybe downtown Disney, but I think like, I think just it just within California Adventure is enough, you know, to have sure. him just be like just being Deadpool and being very meta, very self aware. Like, he could do ten minutes on award wieners. Totally, and I think as we have, and right. and I think that <laughs> and we like, have the I, Deadpool of Disney podcasts. And like I want to see, at, or at the very least, I want to see him like with just ridiculous merch hanging from him, like he's just spending the day there. Yeah. <laughs> A lot of bags, yeah. T-shirt, <laughs> like I survived ear- Guardians like, of the Galaxy. T-shirt. All of it. And I'd, just I'd love of- to have him just placing free Mickey ears with the wrong name placed on children's heads. What's your name? Is it Francis? <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just like let the character really go nuts. You know. Yeah, I agree. Um, Great idea. Yeah. But and- imaginary. Right. So, did you notice on Provost that he also spoke to our our pal Dave? David at the uh, Red Rose Tavern. You mean no. he didn't just stand oh, did there looking know? at him and not speak? 
friend well, of the show, David. He did. <laughs> a, he did a. Uh, he did a a rundown of all of the details in Red Rose Tavern, and the whole time I'm just like. I think you talked to David because it's all it's all the same stuff. I mean, he went a little bit more in depth, which is good. But um, I didn't. Again, we're just uh, we're every you know we're not steady, right? We're just it, we're we're I'm playing the field with him. <laughs> we the family just got back from Yellowstone this summer. We talked about it, and his family went to Yellowstone. And this is gonna just the families didn't hook up. No, was, we were we were months apart. But oh. he was doing this, you know, Provost Park Pass is like hidden secrets, details, things you may have missed, like, you know, and he's trying to get content. And I really don't want to be disparaging about the guy. But when you are filming your family trip to Yellowstone and then you read a little sign on the walkway and then you get on camera and tell everybody about this great, amazing fact, <laughs> it's like, yeah. okay, dude, you don't have to film everything. It's, it's fine. A little bit of that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, anyway. I think when he's good, he's really good. Like, yeah. he's, and he's I'm jealous by the way. One hundred percent from jealousy, right? And I feel like there's probably there's some amount of personality overlap a little bit there. Like, I feel like you could take on that persona if you chose to. You know, um, <laughs> and the look on your face is a little bit <laughs> disgusted. <I'm not. laughs> also oh, no. knowing and acknowledging, right? Right. Um, yeah, I think the I, I could see. <laughs> <laughs> not, not a good time. Not, not, not a good one. time. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think that that yeah, I think that he's he's an interesting dude. I I have come around to liking his his content, but then every once in a while he does a subject or he does it in a way where I'm just like, okay, no, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's kind of where I'm at. Yeah. All right. Let's take another step back. Uh, sorry, this is your show, Dan. Um, when I said Walt Disney would be spinning in his grave, mm -hmm. if with this film, Deadpool Wolverine, mm -hmm. you guys both seem to disagree with me. I think that Walt Disney, we're, we're kind of in this weird place, understandably, where he's stuck in a, in time. And it's yeah. almost like we're infantilizing this poor old man. Sure. Um, I think that, I think that over time, maybe, his his tendency was always to like rather than push and think on things like embrace it and i think that he would have i think honestly he would have seen the creative potential of a character like deadpool um you know yeah. i think you're right uh, i th i think at the, to your point he was he was a futurist right and he right. would evolve he would say you know what we don't need rapey pirates we don't right. need that right you're right he would and, and so in this instance, I am definitely taking the Walt Disney 1964 and saying if you were, you know, unfrozen and go, wait, wait, my name is on this, you know? Right. But I think you're right. You know, maybe it's a little bit extreme. Yeah. Looking at properties that are popular and then saying, oh, wait, this, uh, this really rude guy, that's what people like. Well, we can, we can chunk off a, a portion of the company and have uh, rude things that people like. Yeah. I mean, half the country loves a rude orange guy. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? I, I do love uh, the orange bird, even though, um, <laughs> even though I was thinking Hulk Hogan, but oh, Hulk Hogan. Oh gosh. No. Oh goodness. No. He's much too beef for me. Yeah. Um, I always, yeah. I don't oh know. Am I going to? Okay. Hey, Pastro Corrections. Well, okay, good, good idea. Um, here we go. Uh, Eric, uh, I, think, I think Eric knew where I was going to go with that one. Uh, Pastro <laughs> Corrections. What I was going to say is that I sometimes, when I consider Hulk Hogan, I can't help but wonder <laughs> how tan certain parts of him are. <laughs> yeah. It's a great uh, question. Real past show corrections. It's, it's, My wife pointed out a few episodes ago when we were talking about our tours. Yes. And we talked about how well, it's kind of weird that they gave us orange juice and a cinnamon roll before going yeah. on this tour. She said, well, Walt loved going to the orange juice right. place, the sun-kissed house. Oh, look, oh, he, oh, he's got it framed. Look at that. Uh, but yeah, my wife uh, mentioned Walt loved his orange juice, and I went, you know what? You're right. Did he also talk about how much he loved going to the Sunkissed 
uh, cinnamon roll house. And she said, that's not a thing. And I said, okay, there we go. We're half, there you go. we're halfway there. I thought half, she right. was going to remind you that Walt Disney loved giving blood. And that was <laughs> <laughs> and orange juice is a great way to get that blood sugar back up. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But there yeah, going go. back to now the we... Walt Disney coming around thing, I think that he would have definitely at some point been like, yeah, you know what? This is, let's blur the lines. Let's, let's actually find some creative use in blurring these lines a little bit. We don't need to like, you right. know, we, we don't need to have swears in every like cartoon or we don't need to like you know, Daisy Shore boobs or anything like that. I mean, but, famously, <laughs> he reduced a lot of the nudity in the shaggy dog. Yeah, right. That. He put pants on the dog. <laughs> right. He's like, um, there are teenagers in this movie. Like, they should not be this nude. Well, I think, Dan, I think also maybe to your point, evolution, there's alcohol now. You can buy it at Star Wars right. Land. You can buy beer and wine at a few restaurants and sit down and that kind of thing. You're, you're probably right. Yeah. Let's just say I am. Okay, anyway. You're right. Dan's, <laughs> Dan's, Dan's very right. Yes, as always. Famously with the as one one piece of feedback that I have gotten back from meeting some a few listeners through the concierge is that they always agree with me. So, oh, yeah. um, <laughs> so far <laughs> feedback I've gotten. Uh yeah. All right. So, so are we are we doing this? Are we going to do this? Let's do it. All right. Hey, let's do a show. Let's do a show. Welcome to the Supreme Resort. I'm Chaz Cool Guy. This is YouTube. Hit the like and subscribe button. Comment down below. Hey, YouTube, what do you think of the hanging guy in the, in the Haunted Mansion? If you think they should That's keep not him. what we're doing this show. So, okay. Uh, we are doing shopping. So. <laughs> yeah. Bye, everybody. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Till next time. Right. So we are in our quest to kind of tie up the Hollywood lenses in DCA and uh, Disney MGM Studios. That's what it's called. Uh, we are. We talked about the and the restaurants last time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we very hesitantly <laughs> decided mm-hmm. that. We need to talk about and the rest shoppings. Yeah. <laughs> and the sh- shops to run. The shops to Yes. It was funnier when we came up, came up with yeah. it. So I have some notes f- uh, from the chat that I kind of just barely looked at because, oh, by the way, listener, um, I'm sorry. <laughs> the uh, uh, Scraping the Vault is... is, 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 is I think, th- yeah, I'm sorry. That's all. Okay, here we Listen go. To ears up. <laughs> What's that? Listen to ears up. Listen to ears up. Yeah. Um, Dan's going through it. And so, you know, scraping the vault is uh, the schedule's off a little bit and it's my fault and I apologize, but we'll get back to it anyway. We'll, we'll, we'll scrape. We'll scrape by. We'll scrape by. Uh, so we have the shop name as it currently exists um, from the entrance side to back of the land. As what does in- that mean? We'll go in order. The first right. shop you come to from when you come into the entrance until you go to the back of the land. In that got, order. It. got it, got it, got it. Uh, history or inspiration of the shop slash building. Well, that's something we have covered before, but it's been a while, so we can review that, of course. Mm-hmm. Of course. Disney's copy on what the shop offers, which we all love very much. We all mm-hmm. enjoy the Imagineering copy. Favorite item sold in the store or something unique therein kind of self-explanatory and um that's that's it uh yeah. and because the uh, disney's hollywood studios Jim gm came first um eric's gonna be going first on that and if he says nope nope what jimmy's no. gonna no uh, because dan said maybe it was a challenge if i didn't do something while <gasps> oh Disney World that's right related. that's right yeah jimmy's gonna do it that's right. Okay. And I'm going to okay. sit here and go, all right, I had to learn about something I'm not familiar with. All right. All go. right. So Jimmy's going to cover Disney World. That's right. And when he says something that I find delightful and that, how about this? When I would like to purchase something Ooh, that he has said. Great idea. Yeah. Uh, I'm, you're, you're all going to hear this sound. I love that idea. I and love that idea too, Stephen. What's that? What's that? What's that? Stephen Tyler 
in the <laughs> rock and roller coaster starring Aerosmith. Uh-huh. Uh, they're all on their super stretch limo. And uh, one of them says, hey, we should take our fans with us. And he's like, I love that idea. Oh, then he sent Dan uh, oh, Jimmy a text message. That's right. right. <laughs> and if Eric says something that I would like to purchase from one of the shops on uh, uh, Hollywood Boulevard at DCA, you will hear this sound. The closing when the customers don't come. <laughs> Thank you, Ethel Merman. I mean, I feel like that's self-explanatory. Is There's there no business else to like it? show business, everybody. <laughs> Got no it. No business at all. All right. Well, let's get down to business. <laughs> and if you so, want to subscribe to the podcast, like and subscribe down below. Sorry. Go ahead. So, Dan, I think uh, there are, Eric, correct me if I'm wrong, there are six shops at Hollywood, Bull, Hollywood Studios Sunset Boulevard, and I believe three at DCA. Yeah. <laughs> So <laughs> condensed. What we can do is just kind of go back and forth. I'll start, and then when he runs you out, I'll just skim through a couple. All right, Dan. If yeah. it please the court, it does. I present the first shop that you come to on the left side of Sunset Boulevard. It is not the Villain's Lair or Villain Anonymous, whatever it's called. It is called Beverly Sunset Boutique. Why is it called Beverly Sunset Boutique? You ask. Well. It's because the Beverly Sunset Boutique, in part, is themed after the Beverly Sunset Theater. Ooh. Wow. Beverly Sunset Boutique is uh, it's one store, but it has three facades. This is not unlike the Ichabod Cranes shop. The Yield Christmas shop has three facades at uh, Magic Kingdom. Uh, the left facade is the Beverly Sunset Theater. The Beverly Sunset Theater is based on a real movie theater that was, de- it was demolished in 1988. Sorry. The Warner Beverly Hills Theater at 9404 Wilshire Boulevard in Beverly Hills is what it's kind of close to. Uh, the center facade. Um, there it is. Okay. I see it now. Yeah. The center facade has the shop sign. It's inspired by the Pasadena, Pasadena Winter Garden. Mm. It's uh, on a Royal Parkway in Pasadena. Uh, today, the Pasadena building is sad looking public storage facility. <laughs> <laughs> so it's kind of appropriate. This is a shop. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, when it opened in 1940, it was the Pasadena Winter Garden, a spectacular streamlined modern style ice skating rink. Ooh. Oh, yeah. It was designed by Pasadena architect uh, Cyril Bennett, or Bennett, excuse me. Uh, Olympic champion Peggy Fleming developed her skills at this mm-hmm. very garden we heard about pegging before yes yes exactly uh, uh, at the no, end no. of 1966 the ice rink closed it's very sad the building took on a new role as the u.s postal service it was the u.s postal service sorting facility and uh, so there's a story that the the ground deep below the building was permanently frozen after more than a quarter century under the freezing coils of the ice surface <laughs> <laughs> this meant that the postal employees had to work a freezing cold floor. Eventually, the postal service moved out. After sitting vacant for a decade, it became a storage facility. <gasps> that is the center building of the Beverly Sunset Boutique, its facade. Now, the right facade doesn't have a sign except for the second story window. I got a question uh, for you. Yes, sir. When did it become a storage facility? I think it was 1988. So it's possible that when they turned this into a store it was already a storage facility it's very possible because the <laughs> park opened in 89 so okay okay anyway um <clears throat> oh, excuse me the right facade uh is based on the um it's it's a pasadena it's number 12 east colorado boulevard it's a place called the 35er the 35er is a bar in pasadena's old town neighborhood uh, in business since 1962, the family-owned and operated 35er enjoys the title of the oldest cocktail lounge in Pasadena. Uh, the, de- the designated historic properties list of the city of Pasadena includes the 35er, but only identifies the year as it was built circa 1950 and does not identify the architect. But those are the three facades that make up the store Beverly Sunset Boutique from Disney. Shop 
<laughs> from a show-stopping selection of Pixar merchandise and prepackaged tasty treats inside this whimsical theater. In air quotes. Yeah. Uh, my favorite <laughs> item in this store, and the problem with shops, Dan. Uh, first of all, we've never done this before. <laughs> we've never no. done shops before. Problem is, the merchandise changes all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, but my favorite thing, it's a Pixar themed store, is there's a t shirt that's Bruce the Shark from Finding Nemo, and oh. his mouth's open, and it says, Hangry. Uh, <laughs> I can relate to that. <laughs> exactly. Do they sell merchandise that talks about how I'm an impossible monster if I don't have my coffee immediately after I wake up? Inevitably. Because those are my favorites. Yes. Um, or does it have a little thing about how sassy I am and has a little Tinkerbell wagging her ass nope. at the camera? Nope. nope, because it's not Pixar. Okay. Okay, so let's – real question, it's all Pixar in there? It's a Pixar shop. Um, that's And they weird. do have some tasty treats. You know, they have like a prepackaged stuff and – Okay. Carameled apples and okay. that sort of okay. thing. Okay, okay, uh, and that I'm looking at the Google Maps Street View. So those those two buildings together are that store. Is that correct? Yeah, uh, technically three facades, but three yeah. facades. Yeah, okay, got it. Okay. okay, and then once you get out of the store and you continue towards Tower of Terror, there is mm-hmm. a, a vacation club thing, and then you oh, get into God. the produce shop and pin store and all that. Right. Okay. Um, all Pixar. Okay, so, some thoughts. It's all Pixar, and that's weird because they have a Toy Story. Oh, please don't ask follow up questions. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I'm just I'm just sharing thoughts. Okay. Um, I I find it potentially whimsical that they have a store where it's now storage. So I'm gonna have a like a a holding point for that just in case I need it. Okay. Um. I think that's it for that. And, and for the for the sake of continuity, yeah, with the episode based on my six versus three, I'm gonna do the sister shop uh-huh. before we go to Eric. Is that oh. real Vogue or Legends of Hollywood? It's Legends of Hollywood. Oh, oh okay. okay. Hold on. Go for it. Okay. So Legends of Hollywood street. looks like a movie theater. Sure does. But it's actually <laughs> a shop. <gasps> what? Yeah, it's another theater as a shop. Just like the Beverly Sunset Theater across the street, which we just talked about. Okay. Uh, together, the two theaters form a fitting movie town entrance to Disney's Sunset Boulevard. In California, mm. the former Academy Theater, this is a fun fact, the former Academy Theater is now the Academy Cathedral. But unlike Legends of Hollywood, there's no distinctive spiral fin on the 125-foot tower sign. Uh, again, Legend of Hollywood is based on the Academy Theater which is now the Academy Cathedral. However, if you look at historic photos of the Academy Theater, it once did in fact have a spiral fin as well. This terrific streamlined modern style cinema by famed theater architect S. Charles Lee, hold for applause, Your attention, please. (laughs) When you share your food, you share your heart. So what's on your table this holiday season? Save on your festive feast at Kroger with delicious deals on all the holiday classics. Or wow the crowd with something new, like a quinoa stuffed butternut squash. It's sure to add a pop of color to your spread. How about a sweet potato casserole with a crunchy oat streusel topping? Made with care for the sweet tooth and the savory tooth. With Kroger, fill your table with love and watch as your guests' hearts get as full as their bellies. Kroger, fresh for everyone. showed movies from 1933 to 1975 when it became a church. It was church, money, spending, capitalism. It was named the Academy Theater. Sorry? All my favorite things. That's right. It was named the Academy Theater because it was supposed to become the home of the annual Academy Awards. That's why it was called the Academy Theater, but it never happened. So anyway, from Disney, find fabulous trends, Pandora jewelry, Disney themed fashion and more at this reimagined boutique style store. Uh, favorite item: um, the Mickey Mouse Citizen Watch. 
in the Pandora jewelry section. Is is it just a gift shop for the Planet Hollywood? It's not anymore. But it was. Yeah, it was. Planet Hollywood is gone. Yeah. It even said Planet Hollywood out front. But that's the trouble with shops. They change all the time. But um, right now, Legends of Hollywood. Those are the two theaters, the end. Well, there's more theaters, but that that's the entrance. I I got to say, I don't love this theme of it's a theater, but no, it's a shop. It doesn't make sense. It, oh, no. It's, 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 it's dumb, and I don't yeah. like it, and it's lazy. Uh-huh. Um, what about oh, just the – Oh, is, is, the, is that a trend? <laughs> there's more laziness to come. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank God. Um, okay. I, I kind of know where I'm leaning on this part. Eric, what do you got? Do you want me to start with something that's completely – Historical and non-existent, or do you want me to start with things that are currently there? I don't know. Follow my lead. Yeah, follow his lead. I mean, Jimmy doesn't have anything that's completely gone, unless you count like Planet Hollywood. No, I, I really didn't. I didn't go through all the different iterations and stuff, because mostly I don't care. Part. Yeah, uh, but you do you, Eric. Okay, well, there is a significant place that no longer exists that maybe so- I'll hold off for later. Sorry, before before you go for, I'm totally open to you going down that road. I just want to remind you my my judging style is generally like if it doesn't exist anymore, then I don't care. Yeah, well, I don't care for your judging style, and I want to tell people. What <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, I mean, be share the thoughts. Share definitely yeah, share the, the thoughts are interesting, no, but in terms of rewarding of, of of awarding a point, I see no reason to award points for stuff that doesn't exist anymore. Okay. But in terms of like sharing facts or whatever, that's fantastic. Let's start out with a thing that exists now and has a long history at the parks. Starting from DCA's opening day, it's Rizzo's Prop and Pawn Shop. Mmm. Yeah. The sign above this little hot red prop shop, movie props made, repaired, painted. Uh, Rizzo the Rat, the storied Muppet uh, added to the sign with his own name changed to prop and pawn shop. So he's selling stuff out of this, uh, this thing other than just props. I'm pulling up the map for this one too. Where was that? This is in the Hollywood land area behind the main street. By where Muppet vision should still be. Yes. Yeah. Okay. It's in that. Okay. The, it's it's this shop that still exists. That's in this area between everything. Um, yeah. If you're rocking out at the Mad Tea Party, you can turn around and see this shop there. Is it the studio store now? It is now the studio store. Okay. So we'll okay. get there. All right. Keep going. I just I just want to be able to look at it while you're talking. All right. Yeah, in its early days, it was a messy-looking shop with multiple sides offering Muppet merch like plushes amidst empty boxes with labels like round, screwy things and long, turny things. So the Muppets put their little stamp on stuff saying, hey, here's the weird stuff that we have for for sale, even though they weren't really for sale. Uh, It opened in February uh, 2001, I don't want to say it that way. 2001. It was Nots. basically. What's that? Hot one in the odds. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Before uh, the things happened, it was the gift shop for uh, Muppets 3D. And it remained that way for a while. In 2005, it was rethemed to the studio store with a red sign with black stripes, much like you would see pretty much now. And with the rest of the land. Um, and similar to Disney MGM Studios. Uh, it was intentionally industrial with Mike and Sully plushes and some Muppets merch. Monsters, Inc. opened up in that area on January 23rd, 2006. So this story did double duty with Muppet stuff and <laughs> Monsters, <laughs> Inc. stuff. Uh, duty, yes. I, I see you're trying, to get that a, word. you're trying to get a point just for saying duty. No, um, no okay. absolutely not. No, no. <laughs> I was going to get you in. Um, okay, interesting. Uh, I'm curious why you're going here first. Uh, because that is 
I suppose we do pass another store on the way down the street, but you know what? This is where I put the history because the other store on the street has um, almost no history because it's been there since the start and it's not interesting. So on Ooh. to the next inter- iteration Are you about the of the Philhar this Magic little, gift shop. The what now? The Philhar Magic gift shop. Philhar Magic. How I'm many try- decades I'm- are you ahead of me, sir? Look, I, I'm not. I'm not trying to be combative. I'm trying to play along. I'm, I, I, I'm just trying to like figure out wh- where you're going with this. Oh my goodness! I'm sticking with the studio store for this. Okay. Okay. This got particular. It. Okay. Iteration. Go for it. Go okay. for it. Great. <sighs> All right. <laughs> After the double duty. <laughs> he said it again. He giggled again. All right, we're good. Uh, 2015 during the Frozen Fun promotion. This little kiosk was converted to Wandering Oaken's trading post with a cabin look, so uh, wooden siding, and a wooden sign featuring fake snow. Mm. They sold frozen stuff there. It went back to the studio store with wooden wooden siding after word. Mm -hmm. In 2017, this became the Summer of Heroes (gasps) store. That's what I'm looking at right now. Oh, my. And it sold Marvel merch. Thank God. Yes. Uh, today, it is still there as the studio store. Mm-hmm. They sell toys, plush, apparel, accessories, Minnie and Mickey, Minnie and Mickey ears, yes. Uh, it changes up all the time. What they sell there is based on what's going on in the area. Uh, you can get a magic key discount based on how awesome you are, uh, 10 there. to 20% off. It looks like a box right it now. It does look like a box. With racks outside, they sell things you might need or want. And there you go. That is uh, the studio store. It is very Colorado-ish in that it looks like a box. (laughs) Um, Oh, thank you. Yes. (laughs) I'm. I don't. Okay. What? I don't know what I'm looking at. It looks. I can see. I can definitely see the history of it by looking at it in terms of it, like being. Oh, I could see how this used to be a snowy thing, and that would be interesting. Now it's just Marvel crap in a place yeah. where there is no reason for Marvel crap to exist. True, but there are more historical places for Marvel Marvel crap that um, are still in this area that won't count because they don't exist anymore. Right, and they shouldn't. I mean, let Regis Philbin rest in peace in that building. I. Um, that's a joke about how it's, it's yeah, studio, 17. Yeah, yeah. studio 17. Um, okay. I'm so, okay. Wow. 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 This you is want so, to be a these, startup with a real place. Okay. Right, no, these are such different problems because there's over try. And then there's like this, if we get to the end and you only apply zero points to everybody, I don't care. Okay. <laughs> Jimmy's it might, board. This, <laughs> this might end up being one of those episodes where it's just declaring a winner. I don't know if, if I can do point by point here, but um, you know what? Just for fun, you each get a point. Why not? Yay. Hooray. Let's hear them sounds. The I love that idea. The um, all right. Well, I'm going to counter that with two more. Oh, my. The first one will take about seven seconds. Hmm. Sunset Ranch Pins and Souvenirs. If you want to know the history, listen to the last episode about and the restaurants where Eric goes into detail about the farmer's market of uh, Los Angeles. Disney has no description of this store. Wow. It's not even he, on the map. He met that time limit, by the way. It's technically on the map. Um, I, I'm looking at Google, Google Maps. Okay. Which one is okay. that? It's the Sunset Ranch Pins and Souvenirs. Okay, Pins and Souvenirs. Oh, yes, yes. I bought pins there. I'm sure And a lanyard. Ooh. They have a lot of lanyards. Don't make that judgment, okay? Okay, then. You know what? Excuse me. (laughs) Um, Moving on to Once Upon a Time. I'm just just out of curiosity. Why are you tying in Real Vogue with Beverly Sunset? It's not on the website. I didn't talk about it. Okay, cool. That's fine. Hmm. Uh, Once Upon a Time. The Carthay Circle Theater at the Studios Park is Nobody another heard of that. theater yeah. as a shop. Mm. It's at the end of the Sunset Boulevard shopping street, facing the Twilight Zone Tower of Terror. I'm for Disneyland. I'm tired of that. Supreme. Mm. Sorry, that's Supreme. Okay. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> 
It's one of the more interesting shops with Disney-themed kitchen and serving items. It used to be. Uh, from Disney. Find your happy ending at this Art Deco-style <laughs> cinema said it selling Disney-themed apparel, jewelry, and headwear for all ages. Headwear, Dan. Uh, my favorite thing about the store is uh, they have uh, pictures of the Carthay, Carthay Circle Theater, the premiere. There's Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs posters because this is supposed to be the Carthay, Carthay Circle Theater. Sorry, I'm just I'm trying to navigate the Disney World. Web- oh, there's the map. How do you deal with this thing? This is so counterintuitive. We just it's walk the there. It's fine. Everything what, is north. What's the latest man? attraction? All the maps are north on top. No, I get it. Just like the, the how how you deal with the um, just the the layout of the site the is bevy of options terrible. for purchasing and eating things. In, and it's in like the you're parks. looking we at. Love it. I'm, we love there's it. no expand the map option. It's just here you go. Oh, that's dumb. They're both the same. Now. Dan, that is a no. separate episode. Wait, yeah, did the they change are it? Exactly the same now. No. Yeah, they are. Did Spent is a that lot of recent? Time on the, yeah, pretty recent. I'm a, oh I've spent a lot of time on both these websites. They're exactly the same. <laughs> this is awful. How does anyone... Yeah. It's like they're trying to make it hard. Mm-hmm. Wow. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Um, you were saying once upon a time, I'm looking at the stuff. Yeah, it's based on Carthay Circle Theaters, the facade. They have stuff. I hate that. That's such um, a bad thing for them. And there, there is some cool nods to the original, to the theater, to the premiere, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs posters. The rest of it's just crap. Merchandise. The end. How hard are you? Um, I'm not that excited about this. They. Okay. Do, do they, do they remind you constantly that it's, that it's where the uh, snow White Giant was premiered? Neon signs. Hey, come on, look. <laughs> um, no follow up questions. <laughs> oh, sorry. Okay. Um, I just, I really, because I mean, let's face it. They all, all the shops basically sell the same crap now, right? For the most part. So right. some of them are specific to like the first one was Pixar stuff. Like that's where you get your Pixar stuff. What does it have to do with Sunset Boulevard? Absolutely nothing. Um, but that's, I think, true for a lot of Disney now. Yeah. The merch is just the merch. Like oh, gosh. if it's not directly at the exit of a, of a ride, it's just kind of whatever. Yeah. And and that's, that's the same on on both coasts where it, it right. it's just kind of like we pattern this after a thing and Hey, why not come in? Here's where we sell books. Here's yeah. where we sell hats. Do they sell books? Um, Are but these- yeah, Dan, and even when it isn't the exit of the ride, we'll get to in a little bit. It doesn't necessarily mean that they sell merchandise from that ride. <laughs> right. <laughs> mm-hmm. But anyway, it's, it's Eric's I, turn. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, is it I, though? The issue so that I'm noticing so far, the trend I'm noticing so far, and I'm, I, should, I shouldn't be surprised, is that what is annoying me about the Disney World shops is generally what annoys me about Disney World, which is like, let's make a theater a shop. Let's make another theater a shop. And then I would imagine that like they were like, okay, well, we ha- we're going to build this other theater building. And someone's like, let's put a shop in there. <laughs> Uh, Dogs agree. <laughs> uh, but anyway, I don't want to focus too much. It, that that is just that is very irritating to me, and I'm gonna I'm gonna let it go, Eric. There's no frozen merchandise in these. <laughs> Eric, not tell not us currently more. at least. Hi, Brandy. Yeah. Hi, Brandy. Brandy says hi. Probably. Um, tell us more about shopping. All right. Uh, we'll we'll not go into the completely extinct store yet. I guess. The uh, Dawn Hollywood Regis Philbin building is that what you're talking about? Uh, I don't know. Oh yes, yes. The Regis. Uh, yeah. No. Studio Seventeen. The Wh- building when that do is you want criminally to go there? underused. I I don't know. I'm just I'm not trying to steer you. I'm just trying to figure out where you're going. That's that's all I'm doing. So if you, you want me to go to Stage Seventeen, we well can. the directions were very clear. From the entrance of the park to the back of the park of the the land, and you started at the end. Yeah, I started in the middle. Okay, that's, that's fine. fair. Well, yeah. yeah, they're all kind of at the same place. Uh, it's not a big land. Okay, let's let's hit the things that are still there. Yeah. Okay. Um, if you want to touch on Studio Seventeen, I don't want to like put you in a box. I don't want to put you in Colorado there, but 
Um, when it comes to history, they've got the best, even though they don't exist. Right. So, I mean, we, by all means, that's stuff you should share. And then let's get to the things that are, are still there. <laughs> that's this poetry stuff. No, it wasn't. Okay. Can I make a motion that from now on it's it's going to be called the Regis Filbing? <laughs> Instead of the Regis Building, it's the Regis Filbing. I, I'm into that. Hey, uh, all also, right. also Wyoming. I'm sorry, sorry, I didn't want to uh, ignore your also that that you are also boxy. I just forgot the name of your of your state. So okay, go ahead. They're George. the home for foxy boxing. So yeah, you should <laughs> respect them. <laughs> I met someone <laughs> at, a, at a at a bar some time ago who was very proud, like oh. very, very, very proud, as though it were an actual title that they were the Foxy Boxing Champion of uh, Riverside County. Oh, the whole take, county, you say? Take in, take in all that that means, and <laughs> and I. Did not engage further with this person. <laughs> Were you able to count all three of the teeth? <laughs> no, it didn't. It wasn't. It wasn't in that direction. It was more okay. of yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh my. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, you know what? Let's go. Let's go into the distant past, the murky past of two thousand and two thousand one. Uh, Opening September 14th, 2001, a notorious date. (laughs) Not that notorious, but, you know, close to a notorious date, I suppose. Uh, Who wants to be a millionaire? Play it! I do. Uh, This uh, attraction closed August 20th, 2004. You know about the the game show, right? Uh, Not only do I know about the game show, but I played it. In play it several how, times. How many and I got as far as 32,000. Wow. I got a pen. Is that your final answer? It's my final answer. A pen? A pen Anything like else? A pen. P I N, not P E N. Oh, pen. Um, it might have got. Did wait, you trade it? I might have gotten a hat. I don't know. I don't remember. But did I just you ever being, call a random person? No, I did not. Cool. Final answer. Okay. Um, yeah, that was that was a silly attraction, but I'm glad it was there. I'm glad it's gone too. But right. they should put well, something in there. Well, it it left, and uh, the next place that came in, uh, Dan. Let me ask mm-hmm. you a question. Uh, mm-hmm. This is only vaguely related to who wants to be a millionaire. Do you want to build a snowman? Um. Yes. Any warehouse with actual snow falling from the ceiling. Uh, sure. Okay, great. Is that what the, is that what happened? Yes, that's what happened. Uh, and they put a an attraction into that space where you could come in and you could sled. Oh God! Down a slight decline, uh, you could uh, purchase food in there. Uh, Scandinavian meatballs with cream sauce and lingonberry drizzle. Uh, Eric, you're starting to do that thing you sometimes do where I'm tempted to give the other park a point because the things that you're talking about is no longer there. They they don't exist, but you know what? Do you want to go to Ikea, Dan? Uh, no. Let's not, not really. let's not tempt Dan to give points away. <laughs> um, I could give you my Swedish be- meatball recipe, but that has nothing to do with anything here. Uh, this area ran from January 7th, 2015 to April 30th, 2015. Uh, then it came back in January. Uh, sorry, no, November. January is right above it. November 13th, 2015 to January 7th, 2016. Mm-hmm. You could buy frozen stuff there. Right. In addition to the food and the like sledding. Like Swanson Foods or like. No, uh, the Gordon's Fisherman was no longer there. Okay. Yeah, he died from <laughs> exposure. <laughs> Mercury poisoning. <laughs> um, October 2020. Jimmy, your uh, microphone's on. It, Jimmy, does Jimmy want to say things? No, I was just said, I said Mercury poisoning right when Dan did it. <laughs> and I said, you beat me to it. And I was muted. Go ahead. Nice. <laughs> All right. Well, October 2020, 
Uh, this area that has been a, it's right on the perimeter of the property and it was neglected for a long period of time, mm. but it became the backlot premier shop in downtown Disney. Despite being in DCA, it was one of the areas where if you came back to the property during COVID times where you could not go into either of the parks, mm -hmm. you could go into this shop, which was a giant warehouse where mm. they would sell you stuff. Wow. You know, it'd be kind of fun to revisit. <laughs> we did a live stream of me <laughs> on opening day. We were there. Yeah. yeah. With my family doing a tour of downtown Disney the day it opened. During COVID. That was great. <laughs> mask required and less stationary, actively eating. And there was a line <clears throat> to get into the Disney store, uh -huh. the world of Disney, that extended across the Esplanade from the entrance of the store. Listener, Disneyland fans, imagine you're in front of the store. Mm -hmm. The line went across the Esplanade past the ticket booths on the other side four times. Well, this was before the internet <sighs> existed. Nobody could order things on Amazon. So that's right. Know, uh, but yeah, that might be kind of fun to, to explore. I, where do you even find that? Do you think we could find that on ears up archive somewhere? Yeah, we can. Uh, anyway. I want to find out what exciting things are currently in that giant warehouse. Well, currently in that giant warehouse, uh, there was, in June of 2021, a giant Marvel shop mm -hmm. that sold things from the Avengers campus that had recently opened. You didn't have to go into the Avengers campus to buy this stuff. Oh, thank God. It's like across the park, so that's good. Oh, yeah. And uh, they sold the Web Slingers robots, mm -hmm. in case you wanted those. They sold the little add-ons for your wrists. So you could get better scores. They sold lots of clothing, and now there's nothing. I think I figured out how I'm going to have to do the pointing pointing here. Point, I'm just pointing out here. that this is not a real place. That no, exists. no, I, 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 I get I'm it. I'm just you. I'm catching on to themes here, though, that I'm not loving. Uh, it's the opposite of ba da ba ba ba. It would be ba da ba da ba. I'm going to figure out what that is. Uh, I don't understand why in this area that you've talked about, there aren't like Pixar things that you can uh -huh. buy because you have Mike and Sully's uh, world of very far facades. from Pixar land. Well, yeah, but so is the uh, what's it called? The Beverly place. Like that's not a it, real place. On on holiday, does he sound like, hold on. Let me pull the there. The Beverly is just a storefront. It doesn't exist. Right, but the Beverly Sunset is Pixar stuff. It has a lot of Pixar stuff, and it's far away from Toy Story Land, oh, right? Oh, okay, okay. So I'm just saying that, like, the precedent has been set that you could, like, the studio store could be a little satellite store for Pixar crap. Sure could. Or, and then the giant warehouse, if it's not going to be turned into an attraction, which it should be, um, if you're going to keep it, uh, a store. Autopia Part 2. Okay. Autopia Part 2 or like, I mean, you have Mickey's Magic there, which by the way, I don't know why it didn't go into that building, but okay, whatever. That's Autopia um, Part 3. <laughs> um, there's, it, it, it's just, I mean, to have an empty building at all is just pure wasted space. I understand that they need somewhere to wash the, you know, 3D glasses for making for Philhar Magic, but like 12 people go in that place a day. Um, so I'm going to do opposite point in time for Disney World because that's ridiculous. I love that idea. Um, he loves that idea too. <laughs> uh, uh, Dan, it would be so it's ba da ba ba ba. The opposite would be ba 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 ba. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, I'm going to figure it out. <laughs> Jimmy, David Lynch I, knows how to do it. Yeah, I know. So, I know. Dan, that's, it, <laughs> the, next, the next thing is still Eric's store that actually exists. Um, and Dan, if a naming device for award wieners sells hot dogs and schmoozies sells smoothies, what do you think an apparel shop in circa 2000s Disney Imagineering Post Disneyland Paris not doing well. What do you think they would call that store? Sorry, what, what was it? The, the, I, I was I was typing in ba da ba ba ba, and it's mm -hmm. abab 
ab ad ba. Anyway, ad um ab um um get a recording. We we need to do it right. David would not scrimp on that. Ab 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 ad ab ab. <laughs> Sorry, let's <laughs> uh, Dan, naming devices. Uh, yes. Okay. okay. You're gonna you're you're Michael Eisner's Walt Disney Company okay. in two thousand. Mm-hmm. Okay. And you're thinking, oh, we have a hot dog store. What do we call it? Award winners. Award obviously. winners. Yes. We have a smoothie store. What do we call it? Smoothies. We have an apparel store. What do we call it? Um oh um I don't know. Eric, I'm, t- I'm torn. What, the I'm apparel the store in Walt Disney World? No, the th- the store you're about to talk about. But no, I'm not about to talk about a store. You're up next. What I've well, got? Gone Hollywood and off the page. Come anymore. on. All right, it's called Gone Hollywood. Ah, anyway. uh, okay, okay. I, I get what you're going. Gone it's technically Hollywood. Eric's turn because he just told you about his thing that doesn't exist. But I will right, go. Okay. Rock okay. around the shop. Okay. Oh okay. God! Oh <clears throat> no! 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 Rock around the shop! No! No! This guy gets a point. That's that's <laughs> stupid. I cannot tolerate that. That's no. It's inside. The exit is the it is the exit gift shop for Rock and Roller Coaster starring Aerosmith. Right, and Aerosmith famously sang "Rock Around the Clock." Naturally, one, two, three o'clock, four o'clock, rock. Oh my God! Um, <laughs> anyway. So Rock Around the Shop, the, the theming is it's inside of a building that is supposed to be like a soundstage, but it's also a recording Love and studio. a merchandise store. There. I mean, shop looks okay. like a lady. Like, come on. Ooh, that's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in. Shop looks you know, you, like a lady. Yeah, wow, wow. I like that. Shop I mean, looks like a lady. Hold on. Aerosmith. I'll help them out. All right. Um, Love in a... Merchandise store. <laughs> dream, on, dream on. Shop on. Shop on. Crazy. Uh, uh, sa- saving. Crying. Shopping. Angel. Uh, uh, cast member. Hold my soul. Uh, uh, oh, sweet emotion. Uh, sweet promotion. Sweet I mean, promotion. come on. There's there's so many different things you could do. Living on the edge. Shopping in the store. <laughs> okay. No, I, I, suspo- I suspect at the time He's they may have fast. been entertaining other bands, but they don't want to rebrand the store. Anyway, it's a studio building. Um, Disney says, <laughs> "Lay it down. Lay your credit card down." <laughs> there you go. Uh, survive rock and roller coaster starring Aerosmith. Then walk this way. No. Uh, walk this mm-hmm. way. Mm-hmm. For Aerosmith gear, music, and ride-related items. Train um, kept a rolling, savings kept a coming. <laughs> <laughs> Come together, shop long. together. Shop looks like a lady. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so in the store, you can get all the things I just mentioned. And imprinted on the counters are a hidden Mickey and a hidden Minnie. Both made out of guitar picks. Mm-hmm. <laughs> there you go. Dan's impressed. Sorry, like, listener. Dan doesn't always it, it, like express his emotions. Uh, oh, verbally. sweet emotions. Eat the rich, be the rich. There we go. Uh, <laughs> sweet wa- Dan emo- Dan motions. <laughs> Fly away from here. Shop in here. <laughs> Fly away to here. <laughs> Amazing uh, um, shopping. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing shop. <laughs> Amazing shop. Yes. Yeah. All I'm saying is it would have taken try. Not even yeah. <laughs> hard try. Just try. Rock around the shop is unexcusable <laughs> or yeah, inexcusable either one inexcusable either one. um so eric has two more stores i just have one so it's eric's turn okay all right go uh, on how Hollywood. We, how i went from six to three and <laughs> now i have more than he does i have no idea there we go uh gone but hollywood jimmy idea. mentioned this one it's on uh hollywood boulevard it's on the left it is based on the 3050 wilshire boulevard building it's the bullocks wilshire building bullocks 
bullocks. Uh, Art Deco style holds together a lot of the fake themes along this street. Uh, This was the flagship location of Bullocks, which opened in 1929. Plenty of visitors during its heyday uh, included uh, notables like Mae West and Walter Elias Disney. I don't know who that is. Uh, By 1989, all Bullocks were owned by Macy. Macy owned all the Bullocks. Uh, this location in the real world is currently the Southwestern Law School. Visit swlaw.edu. It's a beautiful campus in downtown. Put in promo Hollywood. code Supreme. Uh, clo- yes, please. Uh, yeah, code Supreme if you want to sign up to attend a law school for fifteen percent off tuition. <laughs> no, no, four four and a half percent off tuition it's close to the courts inclusive it's an inclusive campus uh it's it's hashtag woke uh visit the website for a virtual tour of the campus famous people went here maybe um but yes four and a half percent off your tuition uh yeah supreme uh you can go to this actual store for apparel accessories and pins it's not Uh, listed on the map that's really weird it's been here since February 2001, Dan. No, I I know it exists. I've been inside the building. I'm not I'm not <laughs> doubting that it exists. I'm just noticing that it's not on the it, it's not listed on I mean, it, are you they, looking they, at they shops or attractions? Shops. Like are you they looking have at, like, like it's porta-potties? noted as gone Hollywood, but it, there's no like little clicky thing where you can go show me more. Yeah, oh, okay. It's just, it, it, it's weird. It, it, they change up the the merchandise in this shop quite a bit. I've bought Oogie Boogie merchandise there during that time of of, of day. Mm-hmm. Uh, they have a random amount of Disney, Marvel, Star Wars, Halloween stuff based on the season. Uh, originally, apparently, oh, Jimmy's showing a thing about the shop. No, I, I, go. I, I, I know. I'm looking on the website. I'm just, I'm, I'm only stating that the thing I saw is weird. That's all. When the shop originally opened, it sold designer pet products and Zen uh, accessories to fit in with the uh, Hollywoody theme. I can't find a whole lot else about that. Wait, other z- than that Zen? statement. Zen, you, yes, like vaguely like, religious, meditative stuff, and also dog that, stuff. Do they still sell that here? No, no, they sell Mickey stuff so. right okay. now. That's yeah. So they sell things about real things. Yes, in fake Hollywood <laughs> land. Yeah, as opposed to Zen, they sp- right. <laughs> okay. Yeah, um, nobody nobody knows that's real. Come on. I mean, the building's nice. It's not a theater. If I'm being really honest, I, I I am tempted to give it a point, but probably only because I like the building and we've already covered that. It's a nice building. It's small. The shop is small. The shop is small, but I I, I find it pleasant. Um, Have you bought anything there ever? Ha- I don't remember when I've bought anything besides a magic band at any Disney or, or food at any Disney property. I'm not a shopper that this is why I, this is why I'm judging. Cause I don't, it's not a thing for me. Okay. Um, but I can tell you that that is, it's a pleasant building to go in. And I don't know if that is point worthy, but I, that might be a hold, a holding point on Disneyland side. Dan, I, I need to interject. Yeah. Gone Hollywood is not on the map. It is not there anymore. I know. It's on the app, but it's, it's, on, the app, the but app it's not on the map. Yeah, you're right. It's not on Disneyland.com. It's really weird. And I mean, I know it's still there. I'm not. I just searched it in Disneyland.com and it does not come up. Yeah. So maybe that's, maybe that erases the holding point because it, it should be on the thing. It's, it's not it's an obnoxious the, store. But not on Disneyland.com. Yeah, I mean, I don't look, I don't love it, love it, but it's, it's a store that I have. I sometimes huh. go into just, Oh, it is on it's like, it's it's gone Hollywood, nice. but there's I, no little thing. Let me look up. Yeah. Huh. yeah. Dan's right. It does say on the app or on the, on the map on Disneyland.com, it says gone Hollywood. Yeah. As like, that's what it is, but there's no, 
clicky it's not things. a lot. Your point, there's no icon. You know to- what it is? You know what it is that I think I'm wanting to give it a point for? And I don't know if this is fair or not, but I think I'm identifying where it's going for me. That building works as a really, really good transition from the uh, entrance buildings and that string of, of uh, shops on that end. Fair. It's almost like a continuation of the idea, but it, it also becomes more defined as a Hollywood thing. If it exists, if, which if it would, does. Yeah. The app says it does. The website says it doesn't. I mean, I'm looking on the website where I see the words gone Hollywood. Yeah, we've all been there. But it doesn't have a link. I don't nope. know. I mean, it's it's physically there. I was yeah, there. No, like one, a no month one's ago. arguing that that's a possibility. <laughs> Um, it, it's just weird. Um, it's next to award wieners, so it may be stolen glory. <sighs> I'm really torn. Uh, Jimmy, do you have any argument against me giving it a point it's for hard, that reason? It's hard to say because we don't know if it's a thing. You may as well award points for who wants to be a millionaire play it store. Cause it just doesn't No, I exist. know it's, I know it's there. That's gone. Can you go I'm in not there? claiming that's there. I've been, I, I, I have no reason to suspect that they would close that place. It's in the app. It's not on the website. I, this is just, I mean, Disney's d- digital presence is insane anyway. I think we're getting too focused on this. Yeah, I really don't <laughs> care. That's, that's uh, okay. my official stance. That's my holding. Oh. I'm going to keep that as a holding point if I need it. Disneyland's already in the lead. Um, Jimmy, what do you have for Disney World? Okay. The, the, the last shop at Hollywood Studios, Sunset Boulevard is the Tower Hotel Gifts. Now, naming, fine. Mm-hmm. It's the Tower Hotel. It's the gift shop. Mm-hmm. When you go to a hotel, they call it the gift shop. Let me remind, remind you, the point is to win here. Oh, uh, <laughs> Tower Hotel Gifts. Um, oh, yeah, I, I don't care. Um, Tower Hotel Gifts, Dan. Um, you can listen back to the Tower of Terror uh, Guardian's episode for more details on the building and the inspiration and everything else from Disney terrifying gifts and chilling curios await you in this special shop if you're brave enough to take them home with you huh? very much like the rock around the shop Dan mm-hmm. you can buy merchandise from the ride like that Tower of Terror Tower Hotel gifts you can buy say it with me Nightmare Before Christmas. Oh, God. Oh God. <laughs> it's a lot of Nightmare Before Christmas merch. In a place that in, doesn't. In the exit it. of the Tower of Terror ride. Now, you can also buy Tower of Terror merchandise, like a bell cap, like a bellman's hat, uh-huh. Tower of Terror on it. You can buy a bell, like a you know bellboy bell, Tower of Terror on it, they have Hollywood bells. Tower Hotel. Yeah, they're, that's why they're called that. You can uh, you can see a Tip Top Club poster. The Ooh. Tip Top Club, of course, being the club that uh, Steve Gutenberg went to. Can you purchase like whimsical, like versions of things that you would be able to purchase at a regular hotel if it was a famous hotel, like a robe, bathrobes? Yes, yes, okay, you can. okay, okay. Yeah, there's there are hotel themed merch you can buy. Yes, like ashtrays and a holder for all my toothpicks. Possibly you can buy toothpick holders, no ashtrays. Okay, <laughs> um, but you can also buy the DVD of <gasps> the Tower of Terror, starring Steve Gutenberg and Kirsten Dunst. Uh, I, I mean, that's got to be a point. I think so, too. Have no, I that's bought mine. that? Hang on. The closing, when the cu- have I, I bought the DVD here. there? Yes, I have. Yes. Did you already have the DVD when you bought it? Yes, the I DVD? did. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love that idea. Steven gets it. Yeah. Uh, anyway, that's all the shops at Disney Hollywood Studios in Sunset Boulevard, Hollywood-themed land. I rest my case. I do like also that it looks it, it it looks like a hotel, which is a dumb thing to say, but like it could have been worse, I guess. It does look like a hotel gift shop. <laughs> yeah. Why yeah. they sell Nightmare Before Christmas stuff there? I don't know. Because scary things are scary, I think, yeah. is what they are going for. That's right. Um all right. Eric, this is this is a good one for you. For all the oh, marbles. Good. Well, at Jimmy's place, oh, I yeah, once bought tied. a book about uh the Twilight Zone. 
That was about all of their episodes. But you know what? That was a long time ago, and I haven't seen that since. Um, Off the page is based off of the Chapman Market on 3465 West 6th Street, Los Angeles, California. It's in Koreatown. What does it sell? Pages. Well, like, I mean, pages the real from one. Uh, the NBC that like can the, come home with you and do work around the house. The real one has plenty of Asian food markets and ample parking. Okay. It was named a cultural monument in 1988. Mm-hmm. Uh, currently, the store in the park sells statues, painted art, books, watches, jewelry, etc. Um, I go there almost every trip because there's interesting stuff there. Uh, there's a weird set piece on the uh, marquee as you head in. It's Dumbo, the Queen of Hearts, Simba, pages of paper. They make it look like a uh, a place where people are drawing things, which they do. If you go inside, this is one of the places in uh, on the property where you can find an artist drawing live he's he's drawing live like he's not drawing live images the images aren't mm-hmm. live but he's mm-hmm. live as he draws images or she or they draw images onto paper and you can uh make requests and buy their stuff directly from them so are you telling me that this is a shop in which you can go and see a thing happen that doesn't require you to purchase a thing in order to enjoy the thing you could walk in and watch a person sitting at a desk with a light underneath their table drawing something and you can go, yay. And then they're like, would you like to buy this? No. And you could leave. I think that's a point. The closing when the customers don't come. And I liked it. It has a obnoxious uh, marquee in front. I was worried that it might not. Um, it's it still fits in with the early days of of the park where it has been since park opening. It's still obnoxious. It's your exit from the animation academy on that I, side of the street. In all honesty, I think that's what makes it uh, tolerable is okay. there's a clear connection between like okay. you can see why it's obnoxious. It's like, oh, it's connected to the animation building. This is where animation merch happens. Um, I, whereas the signage on smoothies, schmoozies is just inexcusable. <laughs> hey, look at that. <laughs> let's go. Honey, what let's go. Don't look at that anymore. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, and I I noticed that it's open eight to t- eight to ten. That's good. Open till ten. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. Um, <laughs> I also enjoy this store as much as I enjoy any store. Meaning that I will occasionally go through and go. That's kind of cool. Dan, I don't know why you know that your magic it. key could get you ten to twenty percent off based on how spendy you are with your magic key. I'm aware of that. I don't. Okay. Care. Good. It's not. It. It. it it's. I don't think it's ever like me going, Oh, this is too, it's, it's not about, I mean, it's expensive, but it's not about it being too expensive necessarily. Okay. It's just, I don't like, I don't like most of the stuff. You don't want a little statue of stitch. I don't want a statue of Brian Eno. And I like, I adore that man. You know, like I, it, that's just, that's not, I mean, I don't, you know how much of a Bowie fan I am. And like the only Bowie merch I had Jimmy bought for me and I love it, but I wouldn't have bought it for myself. You mean that statue of Bowie laying hands on <laughs> Brian, you yes. know, while he shaked, he's right. shaking hands with stitch. <laughs> exactly that. Yeah. I'm just, I'm, I'm not a memorabilia person. I'm not a merch person. It's just, and it's not even about like, my staunch anti-capitalist stance or anything. I'm like totally like I'm fine with consumerism as long as it's in check, but like, I'm glad it's just you're fine not, with that. <laughs> I'm, it's just not a thing. It's like, it, 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 it's like watching sports. I just like, I guess that's a thing for people. I don't care. So I think we, I mean, unless, 
I, should we just say we have a winner? Because we can. <laughs> You're the judge. Show. I've just been spending the last five minutes looking for Gone Hollywood on Disneyland.com. And the <laughs> first mystery. the first response of 387 results is the Sinesta Anaheim Hotel. <laughs> it's not there. <laughs> it doesn't exist anymore. I've got, I mean, I've got Duchess of Disneyland that has a picture of the front of the store and the price range of twenty to seventy dollars. Yeah, can, we get, a, a can we get a review. phone number for it? Uh, Hold on. Hang on. <laughs> Do we need to call them now to prove yes. they exist? Because yes, yes. this webs I've seen phone I swear number. I spent a while looking at this today. Number um gone Hollywood. Contact us. Uh, the Hollywood Ball. Should we call the Hollywood Ball? Thank you for calling <gasps> the Disneyland Resort. There we go. We are currently experiencing long wait time. Oh, man. And appreciate your patience. Everybody's calling to ask if the store's open. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> let me see. What Which number did you call? Uh, 714. 714. Well, there's one. I'm going to talk to you about some of our 4636? Six, six? Eight, yeah, that's one. Uh, we have, of course, ears up. Um, by the way, I think we've decided... We are on the winner, but we'll talk about that. Long wait times and yeah. um, your while we're experiencing long wait times, some of the other shows on the network, we have ears up. Uh, wait, we used to have ears up. I talk about concierge. Uh, yeah, I'll get, I'll get to you. And uh, we got uh, Peony Pod, where they talk about Marvel things. It might start getting really interesting. Or wait, no, they, they do past Marvel things. Anyway, listen to the show; it's good. Uh, so yes, as I was saying very, uh, smoothly, uh, also, uh, Bantha milk podcast where they talk about all sorts of milk. Um, they sample, <laughs> they sample milk, all the milk, they taste the milk, they milk each other. It's weird. Ooh, oh, wow. <laughs> Some strange audio. And then, and occasionally they talk about star Wars as well. Uh, and, uh, Jimmy, what you got, what, what you got going for concierge? Well, concierge, we just finished our Christmas in July, uh, promotion. Oh, that's fitting. <laughs> just like Disneyland. Um, if you booked a trip, a package, not just tickets, but if you booked a package with concierge in the month of July, you will receive a $50 Disney gift card prior to your trip. Nice. Can I use it on milk? You can, any kind of milk you want. Um, I, you can't use it at gone Hollywood. That's for sure. <laughs> Apparently it doesn't exist. I booked store that we've all been to five vacation oh. packages in July. Sorry, not, I don't want to interrupt you, but I just looking at my Google news feed. I just want to put it out there that, uh, Iman Khalif is a, is a woman was born a woman. There we go. Keep going. Sorry. Oh, yep. Yeah. I've heard about that. Mm -hmm. Um, Okay. So, uh, the Rohrbach family, T. Rohrbach booked a package to Disney World. Father-in-law, J. Rohrbach, just booked, uh, they booked a package in May. They booked their flights with me. This you family loves flights. the alphabet, it sounds like. Yeah. Wow. Uh, I'm sure there's multiple other first initials. Uh, Steinler <laughs> family booked a trip to Disneyland Paris, along with the Stilly family, mm -hmm. along with the Me family, except it's just me. Disneyland Paris, September 2024, 20, baby. Nice. So your family. It was just me, but yes. Oh, okay. Oh, just you. Okay. Yeah, but I did book five vacation packages to various Disney resorts in okay. the month of July. So everyone I just mentioned will be getting a Disney gift card. Sweet. Good so job, to everybody little, I just mentioned. Doing, doing a little birthday trip to Disneyland Paris. A little birthday trip. Going? In fact, yeah, nice. going to Denmark for work and... I was going to lay over at Charles de Gaulle on the way home. And I'm like, hmm, I wonder if that layover should be 72 hours. And it is. That's smart. Hooray. I'm excited about that. But anyway, so you can book your packages. You can book your flights uh, with concierge, the whole deal. Don't think about it. Just uh, let concierge take care of it. I, I don't know if I told this story last time. I might have. So stop me. Um, I did. Never mind. Uh, it was a good story. Uh, anyway, so yeah, concierge. Eric, who's the best? Who's the best concierge? No, who's the best the uh, shopping place? Oh yeah, that's right. Oh, um, oh god, Supreme. 
Yeah, who is the supreme shopping location? I th- Dan, uh, I'll just keep talking until you're ready to. No, make this a is hard. Hold on, let me let me talk through my thinking process because it's it's oh no because <laughs> it's not easy. I, it's I mean it's it's stupid. This should be easy, but I don't. I actually want to put some thought into it. Um, it's. <sighs> Based on the actual points given and vibes, I gosh, it's so hard because it's like I think California Adventure has the more interesting overall shopping experience, and it doesn't have anything like as a theater that's a shop, yeah, which is okay. nice. But at the know. same time, the flaws that I find in Hollywood Studios are just kind of the same flaws that I find in the entire resort. So I don't know how fair it is. <sighs> I think, no, okay. Between off the page and shopping in an elevator, I, I think it has to go to Disneyland. I, I think... I think off the page. Off the page makes the whole thing more interesting. And just there's there are so many unforced errors with theming and everything. Like there's just give me one good idea for shot. Like anything that is actually whimsical and fun. I mean, okay, there's the, the Hollywood Tower, but like it, it, that's just kind of adding to the the, it's the an attraction. exit shop. Yeah, it's an exit shop. It's a well done exit shop. It is well shop. themed. They did a good job. It feels like a hotel gift shop. So yeah, you know, but I, I and I feel like that. I feel like that point belongs more to the ride, though. To uh, yeah, I would tend to agree with that. Yeah, Walt Disney World does sell Pandora stuff. Yeah, we talked well, about they that. Have and not James Cameron Pandora. <laughs> no, no, this is uh, yeah. They in fact, uh, yeah, they sell jewelry. It looks like a jewelry store. Yeah, I, I, I mean, it's kind of a coin toss, but with just a little, a little kitty cat batting the coin over to, you know, to Disneyland, Meow. I think. Meow. Um, anyway, uh, that's the show. Yeah, uh, uh, we're we're I already did all the stuff. You already did the things. I already talked about the Bowie's planning. Oh, what I was saying oh, with I'm the shows, uh, I would I didn't get to this. I think we got cut off. Uh, the, the, Eric and I have been doing a show called Bowie's Planning. It is very fun for us. I hope it's also fun for the listeners. Uh, if you want to hear a show where I actually like what we're talking about, and and very much so, and Eric kind of almost has no idea what he's talking about, which is fun. Uh, that's a that's a good show, and you know enough about what happens on this show to know what might happen when Eric and I are on a show together. <laughs> It's fun. We have fun. And it's a it's a show where you're going through the David Bowie disog- discography. Yes, Eric has never album. yeah, album by album. Eric has never listened to uh, he's never done the deep dive. I I've done the deep dive several several times. And we are about to get into station to station. So I both- almost listened to station to station while while I was taking my notes for this, but uh-huh. then I was distracted, so I stopped it. Yeah. That's that's a that's that's a good choice. Uh, so Bowie fans, you know what that means. We are and oh, and Eric seems to be liking it so far. So that's good. Spoilers. That's what I seem like. <laughs> anyway, uh, that's the show. Uh, this is where music happens. Stay you, tuned you, for you more better content. Oh, uh, more better. I don't, uh, huh? More better. I don't undermine our things contents. you care about. Look, if I was a listener, I would. These would be some of my favorite episodes where it's like, oh wow, they're they're really struggling to get through this. <laughs> 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 oh, there's music. So yes, don't forget uh, to uh, buy War Bonds. We love you very much. Um, I don't know what else to say. Be good to each other. Be good to each other. Uh, and court is a journeyed.
Shredded beef. <laughs> Fresh baked. Stay tuned for the next podcast, Billy Club. <laughs> All of our episodes should end with podcast about beef. Billy Joel, the Billy Club. <laughs> the Billy Club. The Billy Club. Have you still not started watching uh, The Boys? No, I still haven't. I, I will. I, I think about it a lot. I really think you would enjoy it. I just finished The Bear and mm. Barry. Mm-hmm. I'm starting with The Bees. Mm-hmm. So there. Barry, shows. then The Bear, and then The mm-hmm. Boys. Very mm-hmm. got less interesting after season one. Sure did. <laughs> sure what? did. Oh, I don't, I don't actually care anymore. <laughs> they jumped the shark. Sure Pretty did. quick. Yeah. They went on for like another two up, uh, series, right? Uh, four seasons. Ugh. I think we just started season four like two months ago, and we just have not gone back. Yeah. Uh, the Bears great. Season three yeah. is not the best. Uh, but I will see the boys. And a fun fun fact of the show, uh, the the phrase "jump the shark" originated from Happy Days, mm-hmm. where the Fonz jumped over a shark on a surfboard. Oh, and, and I hear Harry Winkler is in that show. Henry yes. in in Barry, yes. So the phrase "jump the shark" basically means the show's run out of ideas. Now they've jumped the shark; it's just lame now. Mm-hmm. Uh, in the third season of Arrested Development in the original series on Fox, Henry Winkler played Barry Zuckercorn, uh-huh. no relation to the uh, serial killer in Barry. Uh, spoilers. Anyway, that character, they were on a dock, and they were trying to figure out how to keep people watching the show and um, and you know keep ratings and keep it on Fox. The character, Barry Zuckercorn, played by Henry Winkler on the dock, uh, there was a dead shark on the pier, and he jumped over it. <laughs> it's very funny. It was great. Life imitating art, imitating life. Uh, Court is adrift. Mm, Fresh baked. It's a dream inside beef. a dream. Inside I remember dream their quote inside live episode. That was so funny. Where they ended with, we did it! Yeah. Wait for the East Coast feed or the West Coast feed. <laughs> That's such a good show. Anyway, stop uh, recording. Okay.